Hi, my name is Max Ehrlich, and I'm going to be presenting our paper, Quantization Guided JPEG Artifact Correction. So just a quick overview of how JPEG works, because it's important to understand our method. Um, on the compression side, the image is usually given in uh, RGB color space, and that's converted to YCBCR color space, and usually the color channels are subsampled. The pixels are then centered around zero, and the discrete cosine transform of non-overlapping 8 by 8 blocks is taken. Then the DCT coefficients are divided by a quantization matrix and they're rounded to the nearest integer. Uh, the quantized coefficients are vectorized, putting high frequencies towards the end, and then that uh, vector is run length coded and entropy coded. So I've highlighted step 4 in orange there. That's the only lossy step in JPEG compression. All the other steps are lossless. So when we talk about JPEG as a lossy compression algorithm, um, this is the only place where that happens. Any artifacts that can be quite complex that are caused in the image are, are only as a result of this relatively simple operation in step 4. Uh, and then the decompression algorithm is simply the inverse process of this, but of course the step 4 rounding is not uh, able to be fully reversed. So the bottom line is that uh, JPEG images are fairly ubiquitous in modern computing. They've managed to stick around since the 90s despite having some serious drawbacks and there being some major advances in compression since the 90s. Um, the compression ratios are pretty good for JPEG, but the quality is not so great. And the quality uh, reduction introduces visible artifacts, and correcting these artifacts in a post-processing step can make uh, even a low-quality image look acceptable. Um, and, and most modern JPEG software, uh, including libjpeg, which is the most commonly used compression and decompression code, includes at least some basic deblocking filters, uh, even though there's more complex classical techniques that uh, involve analysis of the DCT coefficients. Um, and of course, uh, there's many deep learning methods for doing JPEG artifact correction as well. Um, so the idea is to treat the problem as an image to image regression. And uh, so pixels in, pixels out on the deep network. And uh, here's a few kind of highlights of the, the prior work um, that I won't go over, but uh, feel free to pause and read it yourself there. Um, some of them are quite interesting, including some of the ones that use DCT coefficients. Uh, many of these methods are using pixels and DCT coefficients, so um, these are so-called dual domain methods. So there's some major problems with the current state of uh, prior work. So three major issues, they uh, in general only correct uh, the Y channel, so that's grayscale images. Um, they train a separate model for each quality level, so that's potentially 101 different models because the JPEG quality is a number from 0 to 100 inclusive. Um, and they focus on regression or a classical GAN, which can give a blurry or an unrealistic result. Uh, and the most important aspect of this is that the JPEG quality level is not stored with the image. So if you deployed this in a real system, there's no way for it to know which model of the 100, potentially 101 different models to pick to do the correction. Um, only very recently have people started considering blind or pseudo-blind scenarios where the network has uh, no knowledge of JPEG quality, and the results have been pretty mixed uh, so far. So there's also been um, a few methods that treat color with the same sort of mixed, mixed result. So our method solves these problems and we still achieve state-of-the-art results. So we use a single network structure which takes the quantization matrix uh, as a parameter. And what this means is that we can adapt our weights to different quantization levels so a single network can still achieve good performance on a wide range of qualities. And important thing to note there is that while the quality integer is not stored with the JPEG file, the 8x8 quantization matrix is. So this solves the problem of um, missing information at inference time. Um, one problem here is that since the quantization matrix works on DCT coefficients, 
Uh, in other words, it describes how much quantization is applied to those DCT coefficients. Um, we have to formulate fully DCT domain network here, so we don't use pixels at all. This isn't a dual domain method, it's only DCT coefficients. Uh, next, we correct full color images, so thing to note here is that the Y channel has less compression applied to it. So we correct that first and then use it to guide correction of the two color channels, uh, which are much more heavily compressed. And then finally, we add an additional GAN loss. And this GAN loss has an explicit texture term. And this is intended to restore texture to blurry regions and sharpen uh, edges and things. So um, I've included a figure there with an overview of our correction process. So how do we do the uh, weight parameterization? So um, we use a method that we call convolutional filter manifolds. And the idea is that instead of learning a single weight, we learn a manifold of weights uh, parameterized by the quantization matrix. So um, a way to think of this is that it's a lightweight three-letter um, CNN on each CFM layer that you want to use. And the input to the CNN is a quantization matrix, and the output is a weight and bias. And that weight and bias are then um, convolved with the input feature map to that layer, which comes from the DCT coefficients. And this is a fairly straightforward extension of a filter manifolds technique that um, has seen pretty limited use. Uh, however, that technique takes a scalar and uses a fully connected uh, network. So how to do regression on DCT coefficients? There's really two ways to do it. Um, we use both of them. So there's this block net idea, which is that you process single blocks of DCT coefficients at a time. And to do that, you use an 8 by 8 stry date layer. Um, so what this does is it produces a representation per block. And once you're at the block level, then you can do basically whatever you want in terms of network structure. Um, and then the next is you can process each frequency in isolation. We do that by um, rearranging the, ch the uh, coefficients channel-wise. So it's like 1 eighth of the width and height with 64 channels, each one being a single DCT coefficient. Uh, and then we process that in 64 groups um, to keep the frequencies isolated from each other. So to do the Y channel correction, we use um, both of these ideas, and it's a three a three block process here. So we first restore information in the DCT blocks, and then we restore the frequencies, and then using the context from the restoration of those two subnetworks, we uh, restore from blocks again. And the final result is uh, made by fusing the output of all three of these subnetworks. Uh, the goal being to improve gradient flow. And to do color correction, um, we again, we use the Y channel as an auxiliary input. We do channel-wise concatenation with the color channel. Uh, the idea being to give the network some structure from the Y channel, uh, which is much less heavily compressed. So to do the training and loss, we uh, just minimize mean average error and uh, maximize structural similarity, which is a common metric used for uh, JPEG artifact correction. And then once that's done, we fine tune this with our GAN loss uh, using relativistic average GAN. Uh, we keep the mean average error term just to keep the network from diverging too much from the uh, regression result. And we include this texture loss. Um, which is just a VGG trained on the MINK material classification data set, and this replaces your traditional perceptual loss term. So in terms of numerical results, I'll put them here without discussing them in detail. And then these plots uh, show our results on a wide range of qualities, which is easy for us to do since we don't need to train separate network. Uh, one question to ask here is, do prior works really need separate models? And we analyze this as well. And then I'll just conclude with some um, qualitative results here. So on the top, uh, you can see on the left is the uh, JPEG, on the middle is the regression, and on the right is the GAN. Note how much texture was restored on the GAN images. And then this is an example at quality 20. And then after correction, and then zooming in on the light, quality 20, after correction, and then zooming in even further, quality 20, after correction. 
And here's a list of references that I used in the talk. And uh, please come to our Zoom quest uh, session if you have questions to ask. Our source code and model are freely available. Thank you.